A woman took her 16-year-old daughter to the doctor. The doctor says, okay, Mrs. Jones, what seems to be the problem? Well, my little sweet daughter, Darla, she's been having some problems. She's been having some cravings, putting on a little bit of weight. She's throwing up in the mornings. We're not really certain what this could be. Well, the doctor did a thorough examination and afterwards pulled the mother and Darla aside and said, well, I've got something to tell you. I, I've got some news. Uh, it seems that your darling Darla is pregnant. She's about four months alone. Oh, 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 the mother said, well, this can't be. This could never be. My girl has never even been alone with a man. Have you, Darla? Oh, no, Mama. Mama, no. I've never been with a man, she said. I, I've never even kissed a man. The doctor then rushed to the window and stared out the window for quite some time. The mother said, Doctor, doctor, is there something going on out there? Something wrong out there? He said, oh, no, 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 no. It's just that the last time this happened, the star appeared in the east and there were three wise men that came over the hill. And damned if I'm going to miss it this time. It's a shame to miss Christmas. We hate to miss it because it's a big holiday within the family life and traditions of our culture and how we celebrate together as community. Now, in today's world, there's a lot of people who are concerned. Will I make it home for Christmas? Will I miss Christmas because of all the weather, the storms, the travel challenges that you hear on the news and the radio, predicting storms, flight delays, all these kind of challenges. People saying, oh, I don't want to miss Christmas. Some of them are already singing, I'll be home for Christmas if only in my dreams. I'm not going to miss it. If it's going to be Christmas, it's still going to be in my dreams because I want to be there. How about you? I hope you don't want to miss Christmas. The real Christmas. The real meaning of Christmas is this wonderful time of love, joy, new light, goodwill towards men. All these things described, but they're not wrapped up in packages they're not underneath your tree. They're not served at holiday gatherings. They're not found in the Christmas cookies. You see, it's something you find within. Love, joy, peace, the new light, and the goodwill that we feel towards one another. It all happens within. And you see, the very story of Christmas is trying to tell us the very same thing. It's a symbolic journey for us of understanding what's going on inside within our hearts, within our lives as we celebrate this season. Now, a lot of us find it's a difficult thing to get into the spirit of Christmas. I found some people on the phone that I was chatting with saying, you know, I'm still not into the spirit of Christmas. The malls have been playing the music ever since, well, it seems like the 4th of July. They've been playing and getting ready for Christmas, trying to get you in the mood for Christmas. They've been wrapping packages and getting ready for gift giving, but still some people say, I'm not in the Christmas spirit yet. Some people said, you know, I've been sending cards and I've been baking goodies and cookies and getting ready for all the things that traditionally done, but I just don't feel Christmas. And how true this is because it's something that takes place within, deep within our lives is the true celebration, the true meaning of that Christmas within. In that place deep within us where sometimes there's no room in that place. Because we're caught up in the world of busyness and hecticness, the cares of the world. Sometimes we've lost sight of the real meaning and the real joy that's to be experienced spiritually within our lives. For this holiday is one that down through the ages in multicultures has always been about something happening within us and awakening to the new light awakening to the season of change and transition, awakening to a moment that takes us to something new. For we celebrated most recently the longest day, the long, I mean the longest night, I should say, the shortest day uh, of the season of the year, the winter solstice. That long, long night, but did you feel the change? Did you feel the shift? Because as that morning broke, suddenly this next day, signified this journey of the light now beginning to expand. In fact, I looked at it. Sun set at 5.30 on the winter solstice, 
29, it's uh, on the next day. Already moving, moving in this wonderful direction. More light is coming. The light is unfolding. Get ready for new growth. Get ready for new development within your heart and your life. Get ready with the spirit of awakening to the light alive within us. And so that message of Christmas that we see within us and the world around us, celebrated through so many cultures, is that this wonderful Christ awareness, this wonderful awakening has come to bring us new hope, new peace, newfound joy, and newfound goodwill towards men. It's, this is our very beginning. This is the place where it starts. I find that many times, for me, Christmas is really the beginning of the new year. It's not New Year's Day, that's for the calendar. But in our journey of our spiritual life, we find Christmas is the day of new beginnings to start forward within our life. As we awaken to this new light rising within us and immense possibilities unfolding for us. For the Bible story begins with the birth of Jesus, but is signifying symbolically for the lessons of infinite possibilities that are unfolding for you yet to come. And how important it is that we see that this is the beginning. The beginning of this awareness that first and foremost, you are a spiritual being. That's right. Because the scripture says, Jesus born, God with us, Emmanuel. This beautiful phrase, Emmanuel, that sometimes we don't quite understand. But that phrase, that word itself is describing God with us that we are then awakened to this truth that we are spiritual beings living in a physical world. We don't understand the emphasis and the importance that should be played upon that very truth within our lives. That we say every day, I'm a divine creation. That's right, I'm a divine creation created in the image of God. I am in the likeness God, of God, a spiritual being. I'm a living soul. Do you ever think about that? We look in the mirror, we see the body, we focus on it and say, oh, it's a physical world and I'm living in a challenging dy dynamic and I'm living with all these aches and pains of growing old or whatever it may be within the journey of our life. But how about have we awakened to the fact I'm a living, vibrant soul. I've been, I've always will be. I am a part of this wonderful essence of the divine that's with me all the time. It's that awakening that the Christmas story wants to say, here's your new beginning this beginning is this understanding God is with us, with us in this wonderful connection, this journey that we travel in this life. It's this development of a higher sense of awareness that happens through Christmas that says suddenly my consciousness, my awareness, my thinking, it's all changing. It's evolving from this moment forward as I birth this awakening within my heart and my life. We sometimes miss this message because all of Scripture has been trying to say, give us the example of Jesus, a great except, not the great exception, but the great example. We look in Scripture, it says, Jesus said, go and do thou likewise. I set the example for you. Go and do thou likewise. All that I'm going to experience from birth story on through of my life is an example for you, showing you the pathway, how you will live. So as we awaken to the birth, we awaken this extended journey of the life of Jesus, an example for us. Go and do thou likewise. Jesus saying, greater things that I've done, I expect you to do, I look for you to do. We understand that again, Jesus echoing, I've been the example, but I'm looking for you to embellish, to even do greater than the example of what I've lived for you. How about this from John 3, 15 says, I have given you an example to follow. I've given you an example to follow. My life, everything there. So when we read this scripture, we see it's an example. As Jesus birthed, so we birth. As Jesus came, born, so we are born. And that beautiful message of being born again every day to this awakening within our hearts and lives is so crucial. For this story is our story. So don't miss it. Don't miss the real meaning. Don't miss your Christmas. Don't miss the beauty of the unfolding of this story that may be clouded over with all the trappings of holiday celebrations. Don't miss it. There is something very important for in this story we find there's a Mary and Joseph knocking at your door. Just as we look at this very story with all of its symbolism, we find Mary symbolizing the spirit of love. Love, 
is what Mary is embodying. This young, beautiful girl, this virgin, uh, a virgin a spirit of grace and love and passion within her life is symbolic of that great feeling that we're called to live out every single day. Joseph, he identifies and symbolizes for us wisdom in the world, understanding. And when we find Joseph and Mary coming together, wisdom and love, intellect and feeling coming together, there is a great birth something wonderful that unfolds within our lives and how beautiful it is before wisdom came together well first let's just think about this there was love for let's go to this christmas story there it says before they came together before joseph and mary came together mary was found to be pregnant through the holy spirit mary that watch and body's love is now pregnant with the spirit by the spirit which is love God is love. God is spirit. So that spirit of love filled Mary. She became impregnated with this wonderful essence. And so is the journey of our life. We're going to birth something great, something miraculous this next year. If 2019 is your year for greatness, it begins by saying, let me birth this wonderful spirit of love. Let me feel it in every single way. Let me be filled with the Holy Spirit's presence, that divine love that fills us, that we walk each day in this feeling, this emotion of love in all ways. For the Spirit is love and God is love. And before this young girl, in purity of thought, in virginal thinking, before she knew wisdom, meaning Joseph, she was filled with love. Before sometimes we know all the insights our spiritual journey begins with love, doesn't it? Because sometimes we don't understand it all. We don't have all the infinite knowledge and all the wisdom that we would so like and desire. It's our beginning, though, starts with, I have a love. I have a feeling, a love for the divine, a love for God, a love for goodness, and a love for humanity, a love for nature, a love for the world around me. And I begin there. So it is within our life that we find the story of our being our story, awaken to that love and that feeling, awaken to the Mary aspect of your life. For the symbolism of this scripture is speaking to us now. Secondly, there's Joseph. When Joseph woke up after a dream where he was concerned about Mary being pregnant and thinking something horrible happened, the angel of the Lord had commanded him to be not afraid, but to move forward in wisdom the angel of the Lord imparted wisdom. And this is how beautiful for us because, you know, sometimes we lack the wisdom. We want it. But the divine grace is ever imparting wisdom to us. Came to Joseph in this dream, a sense of aha, a sense of insight, a sense of awakening for him. So here it is. He embodies this wisdom stirred within Joseph and he embraced the thoughts of the angels and he did not put Mary away, but took her as his wife. So love and wisdom raised Jesus. Love and wisdom brought forth the Christ consciousness. Love and wisdom manifest within our hearts and our lives. There's a Mary and a Joseph knocking on your heart. Have you made room in the inn? That inner space within you, knocking and saying, yes, there's a place for something to be birthed this season and every day of my journey. Let wisdom and love come and let them nurture this baby that's born within me. Let them nurture this new idea, this awakening. Let them nurture this consciousness within me. Let nurture, let love and wisdom take care uh, and see it grow and mature and be established. For love is the key to this insight and understanding that goes beyond human reasoning. And love generates an energy that enables us to enter into this new sphere of thinking to be open, to think beyond. You know, it completely dissolves all hate, envy, and negative forces. There's been many a parent who would say to their child, you know, I can't understand my kid. How many of you have parents have been there? I certainly have. I would say, you know what? My son, uh, I can't understand him. Are you sure he's my son? My kid, you know? My son acts that way. Certainly it's not my son. You know, what happened along this way? Where, how did I get this child, you know? who today is, by the way, is a wonderful father and has really grown up and matured. But there was a moment when I said, I didn't understand you, but I love you. 
And through that love, I began to learn how to understand. Wisdom came as I simply began to love. My mother and father, when I came to them, they didn't understand me. They're looking at me. How did we end up with a gay son? You know, what did we do wrong? Well, I don't understand how this could be. You know what? We're perfectly straight people. We're pastors. We've been spiritual. We've led this child in the way that it should go. And, you know, we thought certainly he was going to grow up to be, what, a gay man? How did this happen? You see, they didn't understand either. But love, down to the journey of their lives. They lived to be 97 and 96 and passed away this last year. But they learned and wisdom came to them through the spirit of love. I'm going to tell you this, that as we begin with the Mary spirit, that of love, understanding and wisdom unfolds. And as we walk through this journey every day, that which has been unfolded to us, that which has been birthed within us, requires that we continue to nurture it with the wisdom of Joseph symbolizing in our life, with the Mary love symbolic within our life. It must be nurtured and taken care of. Now you see in the Christmas story, the baby was born, but wrapped in what? Swaddling clothes. These cloth strips symbolic that were tied around bands around that baby to secure that baby. You go to the hospital today, in modern times, they don't take little strips of cloth. No, they've got a big blanket. But you see how they wrap that baby up so tight in a little bundle? So cute, always, you know, embraced like in the little straight jacket. Sometimes we think, wow, where's that swaddling clothes when they're teenagers? I could certainly use a little bit of that as a parent trying to raise teenage kids, you know. Uh, can't we get a little uh, swaddling straight Oh, straight jacket, did I say? No, swaddling clothes for the child, yes. But you see, that swaddling clothes provided a sense of security. Actually, they say that wrapping the baby, it allows the baby to sleep better, rest better, to prevent the baby from scratching itself, and to reduce this risk of crib death. What does this mean for us when we see the babe lying in the manger wrapped in swaddling clothes? That which you birth. This new awakening, this new light, this new discovery, this new consciousness, God within, God within, I need to nurture it. I need to care for that, that new thought, that new awakening. I need to wrap it so it's secure, so it will rest within me and grow into a state of, mature, a state of maturity and develop. I need to prevent it from scratching away at itself and clawing away at life that we think, wait a minute, I don't believe this and I doubt this and I question this and I wonder with this. And we scratch away at any kind of awakening that happens within our lives. We've been there where we've experienced something dynamic and we think, wow, this is really wonderful. And then we walk away from it and go, well, was it really that wonderful? Maybe it wasn't that wonderful. I don't know if I really believe that. Oh, I don't know. Let's forget it. Just walk away. We've been that way so many times within the journey of our life when we talk about these spiritual truths unfolded for our lives. Oh, let's wrap it in swaddling clothes and keep it safe, secure, resting, safe from the scratching away and tearing away and to reduce it from any kind of crib death. Let me tell you this. Something born within you. Oh, a newfound love during the holiday of season. A newfound joy during the season of Christmas. A newfound goodwill towards men. A newfound peace that says, oh, how wonderful the world is. And a couple weeks after Christmas or that Christmas Day family gathering, and that's all gone out the window. As people are fighting and criticizing and tearing people apart, religious arguments, political arguments, what it may be in our family gatherings. We wonder what happened to all that. It died that which was born within me, that new thought, that new consciousness, that new awakening, that newfound love, grace, and light, all these wonderful metaphors. Oh, it's so beautiful, but I didn't wrap it in swaddling clothes. I didn't care for it, so it would allow. So I encourage you today that your Christmas experience, so you don't miss it, requires that you wrap that newborn consciousness, this newborn awareness, and keep it safe because it is Emmanuel. It's God with you. Wake up every day. God with me. God with me, but not outside of me. God within me. Wow, God with me in such a way that it's within. And how amazing that is that we awaken to that. 
And we now walk into the world, the God within me is being manifested through me. Get out of my way, world, because here I come. I am God unfolding for all the world to see. I am here to demonstrate, to reveal, to manifest. So if you're looking for love, come to me. If you're looking for grace, come to me. It would be wonderful if we all woke up like that. If you're looking for peace, come to me. Why? Because I am the revelation. I am this consciousness. I am Emmanuel, God with us. So we find that this is the greatest gift of all. It's not God removed from us. It's not just God with us, but in us. Not just God in us, but God working through us. Not just God working through us, but God around us. And not just God around us, but God for us. Wow. Christmas, don't miss it. That's what it's all about. An awakening to this powerful truth. Awaken to this wonderful understanding. Emmanuel, God within, working through you. And when you face the day, you wake up to this wonderful truth. Christmas is every day in my life. Because I choose to be born anew. Born with this new consciousness. Born with this new awareness. Born with this new truth of life, of light and love within me. I choose this journey that I may live it out fully each and every day. Let me tell you this. You may be like that doctor staring at the window looking for the eastern sky and star and the wise men coming at that miraculous virgin birth. Don't miss it by being distracted by the humor, the trappings of the holiday, the all kinds of the materialism, but have a true Christmas, a real meaningful Christmas, a Christmas deep within your heart today. It's the opportunity to experience the greatest awakening of all time. Begin now, for this Christmas is your new beginning. Amen.